Okay guys, now I'm here to give you my WWE Monday Night Raw review for August 18th, 2014. And the show literally like just ended and I figured I'd just go ahead and give you my review. Um, thought it was a good show, but I was thinking my expectations were probably set too high because I was expecting the Raw to be a little bit better following that amazing SummerSlam pay-per-view. Um... But let's get into it, but first I want to kind of talk about, by the way, that uh, WWE has a new logo now. So it's no longer this logo anymore. Um, it's now the lo WWE Network logo. It's going to probably get people to subscribe to the WWE Network, which, by the way, mine is up after this week. Um... And yeah, um, the WWE has a new logo now, and I think that's uh, fine. They've had that logo for a while now, since I've watched it anyway, so yeah. But it kicks off with uh, Stephanie McMahon coming out. We originally think that it's Daniel Bryan. She comes out to his music, and she wears a, instead of um, her wearing like a Yes, Yes, Yes t-shirt, she wears a Steph, Steph, Steph t-shirt. And she comes out and brags, kind of talks about the SummerSlam cards and just pretty much brags how she beat uh, Brie Bella at SummerSlam. And then um, she has Nikki Bella come out to explain herself. And Nikki Bella explains that Brie Bella was just flat out selfish. She always had to be the best at every, everything when they were kids. She even had to marry, get married first. And she even mentions that she had to mar mar marry like a little troll like Daniel Bryan. And he, yeah, that's pretty much all she really says, um, and she just talks about how they had to put herself in the spotlight and all that stuff, and Brie Bella comes out and says, um, we can just look past this, we can get through this, we're family, you're destroying our family, don't do this, I can forgive you for last night, and, uh, Nikki's like, you can, for whoa, you can forgive me, then she slaps her and says, I can't forgive you, and then Brie Bella leaves in tears, and that was the end of the segment, I thought it was fine build up. I think it's going to kind of start with like those sibling rivalries. They're going to slowly build it up. And then I don't think I think either Hell in a Cell or Survivor Series are hell of a match. I don't think they're going to have a match right away. Um, but yeah, that's how it's going to go. And then we got the first match. And I don't even remember what the first match was. It was Luke Harper and Eric Rowan versus Big Show and Mark Henry. I think they've made their return. I haven't seen them in a while, but they could have wrestled sooner, because I heard they've been wrestling on SmackDown, but I don't want, I haven't watched SmackDown, I don't even remember, the last time I reviewed SmackDown, the last time I watched SmackDown, so, I don't even remember the last time I watched SmackDown, but, um, Big Show and Mark Henry win, Big Show knocks out Lou Harper, and then knocks out Eric Rowan, and Mark Henry hits the world's strongest slam on him for the win, um, <clears throat> At the beginning, I was kind of mad about this, but considering the fact what they did later, I think I'm I'm not that mad about it now that I think about it. And I'm going to tell you why I'm not that mad about it anymore. And then we got Dolph Ziggler and Ric Flair were backstage, and Ric Flair was congratulating Dolph Ziggler. And then you hear him say, really? So you knew The Miz was coming. And The Miz comes up and says that he's invoke he's going to have like a sequel for his Intercontinental Championship rematch with Dolph Ziggler. And it's going to be good. It's going to be like a, a hero ending sequel. Um, and then Seth Rollins gets interviewed. He bragged about how he just got rid of Dean Ambrose. And says that he beat him. Proving that he's the best member out of this year. Which consisted of Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, and Roman Reigns. Um, and then uh, Dean Ambrose dumps... Um, Ice water does the ice back of water challenge to Seth Rollins, and he's like, "Come on, it's for charity." And then um, he throws the bucket at him and attacks him, and a fish just have to break it up. And I thought it was fine. And then Triple H and Kane are backstage, and Seth Rollins wants to take out Dean Ambrose, and Triple H honors his honors his request, and um, says that the WWE Universe gets to pick the stipulation. Then we got Natalia versus Paige. Match was okay. Paige. Says that she dedicated this match to AJ Lee. Um, during the match, AJ Lee comes out and starts skipping to the win. And this distracts Paige, so Natalia rolls her up for the win. And then AJ Lee kind of plays the crazy gimmick 
what she Paige has been doing to her, like saying how she admires her and she ba lives her life around her or something. And she wants to go in and shake her hand and Paige skates before then. I'm not a fan of the storyline, but the matches are good. I wish they had a more intense storyline, though. I don't know why they couldn't. Um, it's just bull crap. Um, and then the Authority, which consists of Stephanie McMahon and Triple H, present Brock Lesnar with the new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. And then, um... Yeah, so the, Triple H and Stephanie McMahon hype it up like they gave it all the hearts when really Brock Lesnar just squashed Cena. So I don't think they watched the main event because they were like, oh, they gave it all their hearts when Triple H, Brock Lesnar, Bailey, John Cena. And we get the new title though. And um, it's pretty much just the same title as it was. Except now it's the WWE Network logo on it and Brock Lesnar's kind of like logo with the, like the beast kind of thin and like the templates. Um, and then Brock Lesnar comes out, gets his title, they take pictures, which I thought, to be honest with you, I was thinking Brock Lesnar was going to lay out Triple H with an F5 because I didn't think he was the type of guy to take pictures or like kick the guy in the face, but he didn't. And then Paul Heyman talks about how... Uh, Pretty much how Brock Lesnar conquered John Cena. That's kind of... I'm just going to sum it up for you. He talked for a really long time about that, but that's really what he said, which is fine. Um, he's a good talker, but, you know, he just kind of... You know, it's just kind of how it was. Um, and then we got Dolph Ziggler defending his Intercontinental Championship against The Miz. Um, Dolph Ziggler actually ended up... Uh, Tweaking his knee in the beginning of the match. And the Miz started working on the knee. Ended up getting him in the figure four leg log. Ziggler grabbed the rope. And then eventually uh, they were on the apron. And Dolph Ziggler super kicked him. And then the Miz fell off the apron. And it got counted out. So Miz wins. But Dolph Ziggler still keeps the title. Because you can't win the title off a count out. So then afterwards Miz attacks Ziggler. But then ends up fighting him off with a zigzag. I wasn't a fan of how they went about this. I think um, if Miz was going to win by count out, I think afterwards he should have destroyed Ziggler and completely taken him out. That really would have made, made it better. I don't really think Ziggler should have laid him out afterwards. I thought that was kind of not good. And then Jack Swagger got interviewed. There was no... Zeb Coulter wasn't on Raw tonight. I don't really know what's going to go on with him because they were talking about how they're going to end Zeb Coulter and it's just going to be Jack Swagger now, which would... I don't really want to see Jack Swagger talk... When he was champion, he was terrible. He was good here, though. He was fine. Um, he's just kind of like Brock Lesnar on the mic. You can't have him talk on the mic too long. But uh, he talks about how um, he let his country down, but he's going to pick himself back up and start over pretty much. So then he has a match with Cesaro, and Cesaro kind of dominates him throughout much of the match, and then Swagger starts to make a comeback. He ends up doing the ankle lock while he's on the apron. And then Cesaro thumbs him in the eye and hits the neutralizer for the win. So Cesaro actually got a win again. Um, hopefully he can get back on the winning track. And then afterwards, Bo Dallas comes out and talks about how he let down 318 um, people. And um, you lost your manager and you lost everything. But as long as you believe, you can get it all back. So I think they're going to start feuding now, which I wouldn't mind seeing. It's a good kind of mid-card feud. Um... So I think on SmackDown, if I watch it, um, they're gonna do like a, they're gonna do the same thing again. So that's gonna be awesome. So, I, and then uh, Chris Jericho got interviewed and he talked about how when he looked at Boy Wyatt last night he saw emptiness and then he talked about how he has the, he's the Ayatollah Rock and Roll he has the WWE fans and he has this fire in him that wants him to win. So they, that was kind of what he said. He just kind of gave his thoughts on the match with Boy Wyatt last night. They didn't really do, tuck, get into an altercation tonight. And then we got Landy Orton, Ryback, and Curtis Axel versus Sheamus, Rob Van Dam, and Roman Reigns. Um, Sheamus, what, there was something up with his knee. Because, you know, he he had like a um, kind of like a protective pad on his knee. Um, but the match was okay. Rob Van Dam ends up beating Curtis Axel with a five-star frog splash. Nothing too special. And then Randy Orton was backstage. And, um... Ric Flair comes up to him and wants to talk about Roman Reigns. But then Randy Orton cuts him off and says, um... 
you know, I'm gonna um make people remind me why they're the legend killer. I don't need help take advice from anybody. So it's just kind of being a jerk. And then Bray Wyatt was backstage. I forget what he said. There were times, but he it was good. He talks about how he's the face of something. <laughs> he he just kind of sums up what Chris Jericho said. Um. And then we got Jimmy and Jay, the Usos, the Tag Team Champions versus Gold, Gold Dust and Stardust. Um, Stardust beats one of the Usos with a roll-up. The match was okay. I zoned out on it at times, but it was fine. Um, then we got Rusev and Lana promo. They trash. They say the same old stuff. Um, then Mark Henry comes out. And I wasn't expecting Mark Henry to come out. Um, and he talked about how he fought. He loves this country. And... He fought twice at the U at the USA at the Olympic Games and um, how uh, he's fine with people being proud of the country, but he doesn't like the way you do it. You do it like jackasses, and then um, he wants to um, give uh, Rusev a tour of the Hall of Pain, and then um, Ma Rusev cheats off him and they brawl for a bit, and then Mark Henry lays him out with the world's strongest slam and the splash. So I think that's why Mark Henry and Big Show end up beating Luke Harper and Eric Rowan because it wouldn't have made sense if he had Mark Henry lose and then all of a sudden he looks suddenly strong here. So I think that's why. And I was like, in the beginning of this, I was like, they're going to have a feud? That's not going to be good. But the, when Mark Henry started talking, I got into it. Um, I don't really think the match is going to be as good when they actually get in the ring and wrestle, but the feud should be fine. And then we got the last match. It was Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose. And the stipulation she could have chosen was a Falls Count Anywhere match, a No Holds Barred match, and a No Disqualification match. Um, obviously, the voting's rigged. I think I've talked about this before in the past. But it, let's talk about how they make it like this pretty much the same match in there, but change up like the rules a little bit. Like when they say No Holds Barred match and a No DQ match. It's pretty much like the same thing. Um, I don't vote on the apps. I don't really care enough to vote on it. The only reason why I really have the app is so I can get the WWE Network off my phone. And my Xbox One and my Xbox 360. So that's the only reason why I really have the WWE ne app. Um, I, have, I, I don't even remember the last time I've... I probably... Maybe would have gotten rid of the WWE app. If it was no WWE Network. I would have been like. Why do I have the WWE app? I don't need it. Getting rid of it. That's honestly what I would be like. Um, I never used it. I don't think I would ever plan on using it. But since we got the WWE. Like if I couldn't get the WWE Network anymore. I would just be like. WWE app. See you later. I bet they're going to actually update it too. So, they, so the logo is different. They have to update the app so the logo can be different. That's kind of dumb. I don't... Anyhow, um, it was a false count anyway match. It got like 40% of the votes. Um, match was really good. Um, this really was the best. This and the Brock Lesnar thing. And this was probably like the best uh, th match on the show. Um, they start off brawling. Uh, they fight in the crowd. And then Ambrose suplexes Rollins on the stage. I think they could have used the stip a little bit more than they did. Um, but actually, at the end, they do. And then Rollins and Ambrose continue brawling. Ambrose brings out the weapons. And obviously, he's crazy. So, yeah, he's just crazy. And he ends up utilizing the chair. He body slams um, Rollins while he's on the chair. Like, he takes the chair and body slams Rollins with the chair. And then he um, gets on the top rope and elbows um, Seth Rollins while he's holding the chair. And then... Um, Rollins throws him into the wedge chair head first. And then um, Rollins continues to dominate. He actually ended up just continuing to dominate. Uh, there was one point when Ambrose went to do his clothesline. And Rollins ended up ducking it and got that Insiguri move on him. Which was a sh shocker. No one ever reverses his clothesline. And then Ambrose. Uh, there was one thing where Rollins was holding the kendo stick. And Ambrose was trying to hit him with it. But. When Ambrose tried to slim shot at him in the corner. And then Ambrose starts going to town on him with the Kendall stick. And then um, Ambrose uses the chair on him. Um, at one point Ambrose just grabs a bunch of chairs and throws him in the ring. And he's, 
Ambrose is about to superplex Rollins onto the chairs, but then Seth Rollins counters into a power bomb, and Rollins covers him, but Ambrose kicks out. And I think th after this happened, um, Kane had come out and started watching the match. Um, and uh, Rollins wins out a table, and Dean Ambrose superplexes him through it. Um, Rollins kicks out of that. And then um, I think Kane... Um, Yeah, it was here, I think. Um, tried to interfere in the match, but Ambrose take No, Aunt Kane got up in the apron, then Ambrose cheap shotted him, he takes out Rollins, and he su suicide dives on both Kane and Rollins. And then um he um hits uh dirty deeds um, on Seth Rollins and he's about to win the match, but Kane pulls him out of the ring and Ambrose blows with Kane and he drop holds him on the steel steps. And then um he throws Seth Rollins over the barricade. He, continue, he throws Kane over the announcer's table. And then he gets up on the announcer's table and does it like he runs off the announcer's table and takes out Rollins. And then um, Ambrose um, gets him back in the win. He's going to hit Dirty Deeds on the announcer's table. Which I forgot to mention that JBL, Michael Cole, and Jerry the Kim Lawler were in commentary. And then Kane gets up. Um, and then he ends up choke slamming Seth Ambrose on the table. And then, um, but it doesn't break. Um, and then Seth Rollins hits the curve stomp while he's on the table. And then Kane, um, pulls out this off like, um, pull, like a cinder blocks. Um, I thought it was going to be his Mac. It was like a case. And I thought it was going to be his mask, but it wasn't. Um, I was hoping, because I really hate corporate Kane. Um, and then, um. Seth Rollins does the curb stomp and the cinder blocks break, so obviously you knew the cinder blocks were fake because that wouldn't happen if you did it to if you if your head's gonna get stomped on cinder blocks, they wouldn't break. They were probably like tinfoil or something. And then afterwards, Seth Rollins wins because Ambrose can't continue. That was about it. Um, yeah, so uh, I thought the wall was good, but I was expecting the wall to be a little bit better. Uh, the highlights were the Nikki Bella, Brie Bella stuff, the new WWE World Heavyweight Championship between Brock Lesnar and Heyman, and that match between Seth Rollins and Ambrose, and I think there was some good, there was some good, also okay stuff, but, uh, those were my highlights, and that's really it for uh, Raw this week, so just subscribe to the channel and do everything else. I normally feel like saying you can subscribe to all these channels. Um, and... Yeah, that's about it. Um, that's all I really have to say, and peace.